Hello and welcome to our webinar, Simplify Access to the Jamf Platform with SSO Integration. Thank you so much for joining us. As everyone is still getting signed in, we'll just go over a few housekeeping items. Please think of questions throughout the webinar and direct them to the Q&A section. We'll be answering them throughout and at the end of the webinar. This webinar will be recorded and we'll share the recording with you shortly after the webinar is complete. If we don't get to you all of your questions, we'll follow up with you afterward. You can also reach out to info at jamf.com to get in touch with someone at Jamf more quickly. Hello everyone and welcome to our webinar, Simplify Access to the Jamf Platform with SSO Integration. My name is Katie English and I'm on the Jamf product team. I'm a longtime Jamf expert and a career Mac admin, and I'm here today to talk about the major evolutions to the Jamf platform and how you can gain access to those features with SSO integration via Jamf account. Today we'll talk through the why of this integration workflow, the ways you can enable it, depending on whether or not you have a cloud identity provider in your organization, and the value this integration unlocks as the front door to Jamf's full platform capabilities, like blueprints, compliance benchmarks, and AI assistant. We'll go through an example of how to integrate with a cloud identity provider, and we'll wrap up with technical resources so you can work through the process in your own organization. But before we get started, I'm gonna talk just a little bit about Jamf and how we help organizations succeed with Apple. Jamf is the standard for Apple enterprise management, serving over 76,000 customers on 33 million devices, and over 100,000 people have joined Jamf Nation, the largest community of Apple admins in the world. A major benefit of choosing Jamf is our exclusive focus on Apple and our history and commitment to something we call same-day support. Same-day support means less work for you, faster access to new Apple features for your end users, and better control for your admins. For 14 years running, Jamf has delivered support for new Apple operating systems, macOS, iPadOS, iOS, tvOS, and even visionOS, the day they're released. If your end users are craving that hot new feature from Apple, it's easy to kick off a mass operating system upgrade across your entire fleet. On the flip side, if you want to pause availability of a new operating system, you can delay operating system upgrades for up to 90 days so your team can take the time to test and validate before making the OS available to everyone. Jamf remains laser focused on helping you succeed with Apple. Same day support is one major benefit you'll enjoy for choosing ecosystem management. So let's dig into our topic, and it actually has a lot to do with our commitment to same day support. To frame the why of the Jamf platform and integration with Jamf Account SSO, I'm going to start with a little history lesson. In the Casper suite, before it was ever known as Jamf Pro, you could create a basic username and password to authenticate to your management web app. And early on, there weren't even password complexity requirements. You could make an incredibly easy to guess username and password and share that across your entire IT team. Obviously, that wasn't the best security practice, and over time, account provisioning has changed significantly. Admins can integrate their LDAP tools like Active Directory and use AD accounts and groups to control access to the management console and enrollment while also inheriting organizational requirements for password complexity and account expiration. Increasingly, customers are moving to cloud identity providers, or IDPs. And up until recently, they've integrated those IDPs with Jamf Pro using SAML, Security Assertion Markup Language. But earlier this year, Jamf introduced the first platform capabilities for our management tools, blueprints and compliance benchmarks. To take advantage of these new features, customers have to integrate with Jamf Account SSO. And if they have the legacy SAML integration already, they have to convert it to use OpenID Connect, OIDC, instead, so that we have consistent, unified authentication into the Jamf platform. And to explain why a consistent identity experience is important, let's give an example of how it works without Jamf Account SSO integration. 
If you want Jamf Pro and Jamf Protect to talk to each other to automate security detection and remediation in your environment, you need to manually register the Jamf Protect console within Jamf Pro by way of an API client credential, as well as manage your admin authentication into each portal separately. Of course, this works today, but it's a heavily manual process that doesn't scale very well. Ultimately, we want you to simply authenticate into a single place with your Jamf identity and have access to all your Jamf tools without extra heavy lifting to link together the entire product experience. And that's the vision for Jamf Account SSO. In addition, the new platform capabilities we've focused on this year are built in such a way that they are not specifically part of the legacy Jamf management monoliths, those being Jamf Pro or Jamf School. We're building new feature sets, including declarative device management and support for quick application of security baselines in a way that permits rapid iteration and allows us to share code between Jamf products. To be explicit about that rapid iteration, to date we've added over 30 different configuration profile payloads to blueprints and made several UX enhancements to make it easier to filter and search for the exact settings you're looking for. We were able to publish each of these additions and improvements without shipping a whole new version of Jamf Pro. Because these services are separate from the legacy web apps, they permit dynamic updating that allows us to create new workflows for your use faster than ever. We're offering greater flexibility, reducing product issues, and improving adherence to Apple specifications. And at the Jamf Nation user conference earlier this month, we unveiled our easy workflow for software updates that will automatically generate declarations to enforce an update to the next version Apple has released within the timeframe that you specify. For our security baselines, we're able to add new workflows like the NIST 800-53 baselines and support for Mac OS 26. And just like the configuration profiles and blueprints, you get these new options all without requiring an upgrade to Jamf Pro. And it's not just about management workflows. Our AI assistant tool can give you insight into questions that span all your Jamf products and the services they use. To tie together the admin user, different product interfaces, and the services for these new capabilities, we needed a unified Jamf identity. So that's the why but let's make sure we understand all the pieces we're working with. I mentioned earlier that you may or may not be using a cloud IDP. These are typically Microsoft Entra, Okta, Google Identity, OneLogin, PingOne, or JumpCloud. You might also see documentation that refers to Jamf ID and Jamf account. Let's talk about the difference between the two. Jamf ID is our service to broker identity across Jamf's products, including Jamf support. Jamf account is the central location where you can log in and see your products, the users in your organization, and your organization's settings. So you would log in at Jamf account with your Jamf ID or with your organizational identity that you've federated within Jamf account to reuse that identity across Jamf's products. Jamf account allows you to assign a number of different privileges to users across your organization so that roles and access are appropriate for the various people who interact with your Jamf toolset. Those roles include administrator, solutions administrator, solutions viewer, organization administrator, and organization viewer. And you have a great deal of control over who can edit or view different tools or who can initiate a Jamf Pro upgrade. To enable your Jamf management instance to use SSO with Jamf account and therefore enable platform functionality like blueprints, there are basically two paths forward. You can use our provided Jamf ID service to bring together user identities in your organization and man manage them manually, or you can bring your own IDP and federate it with our SSO integration. We'll start with the Jamf ID method, as that's a little shorter. First, make sure any admin users on your team have Jamf IDs that are tied to your organization. Jamf IDs are easy to create, and to tie them to your organization, there's a brief verification process that involves entering your product activation code 
or creating a support ticket. After that, for JF Pro, you'll go to Settings, System, Single Sign-On, and use the option for JF Account OIDC. Make sure you copy down the failover URL in case there's any kind of outage that requires standard authentication in any kind of emergency. You'll want to check your Jamf Pro users and make sure that their listed email addresses match the emails on their Jamf IDs. For Jamf School, the login flow now prioritizes Jamf ID if it exists, so if you log in with your email address, it will route you to either your IDP authentication or Jamf ID authentication. And that's it. You're ready to go. Also, a reminder that an immediate benefit of Jamf ID is that you can easily enable multi-factor authentication for added security when logging into your Jamf products. So that's the version if you use our identity service. But if you're bringing your own IDP, it does get a little bit more complex. The first thing you'll need to do is configure your organization's identity provider for an SSO integration. We'll use Microsoft Entra as our example today, but I'll link documentation for other providers in the chat. You or an identity administrator in your organization will log into the Microsoft Entra ad Admin Center, then go to Overview and copy the values under Tenant ID and Primary Domain. Then go to App Registration and click New Registration. You can add a name like Jamf Account, configure the redirect URI appropriate for your region, then click Register and copy the application client ID. These are the region URIs for your reference. They're also available in our documentation. Next, we'll need the client secret value, which is in Certificates and Secrets, then click New Client Secret. Enter a description, select an expiration date, then click Add. Copy the client secret value and save that for later. We'll add access tokens in token configuration. Click to add an optional claim with the token type of access. Then we'll check the boxes for email, family name, given name, login hint, and verified primary email. Then click Add. Then we'll do ID tokens. Add another optional claim. Select ID as the token type. Then we'll check the same boxes. Email, family name, given name, login hint, and verified primary email. And we'll click Add. Next, we'll go to API permissions. And if we're missing any permissions, we can add email, profile, user.read, and open ID. If you want to use groups out of Entra, you can also add directory.read.all permissions here. And that's it for the IDP side. Now we take these pieces that we've copied and we're going to connect it to Jamf account. First, we need domain authorization. In Jamf account, you go to Organization and SSO, then Domains and Add a Domain. You'll get a confirmation message with a unique DNS text record. Copy that text record and add it to your domain registrar. After that, you click Verify so Jamf Account can confirm ownership of the domain. Note that some of these things might take some time to propagate. Once verification is complete, under Organization, SSO, we'll click New Connection, select Entra as our connection type, and then enter in all those values we got from the IDP portal, Client ID, Client Secret, Entra ID Domain, and Tenant Domain. You can also select Get User Groups if you added that to the intro configuration, select the verified domain, then authorize the products that you want to use this integration for. Then just like with Jamf ID, in Jamf Pro, you'll go to Settings, System, Single Sign-On, and use the option for Jamf Account OIDC. Admittedly, a lot of this depends on the flexibility of your identity team. It helps to go into the conversation prepared. If your IDP is already integrated with Jamf Pro or Jamf School, it helps to frame this change as a conversion from SAML to OIDC for new functionality. If this is a net new integration, then it helps to talk through adding your organization's existing identity workflows to your Jamf platform implementation. Now we've got a lot of resources available to help you implement Jamf Account SSO integration. I'll show them individually and then on a recap slide. 
first, I'm going to point you to a blog post that goes over a lot of the points we've talked through today. It also has links to written and video guides for specific IDP workflows. We also have a dedicated landing page in our technical documentation for Jamf account that includes the SSO integration instructions, as well as specific sections for managing users and contacts, the Jamf partner experience, and opting into AI Assistant. And finally, one of our software engineers wrote a very thoughtful piece about the design and intent of identity across the Jamf platform. I very much recommend giving it a read. Here's a summary of those resources in case you wanted a single screenshot. Now, if after reviewing these links, you still need some help, of course, our support teams are ready to assist and to capture any feedback if you need additional functionality with Jamf account SSO integration. So to recap, today we talked through simplifying access to the Jamf platform with SSO integration. This workflow unlocks a ton of exciting features, allowing your Jamf management to connect to dynamic new services that deliver Apple's declarative device management, as well as easy deployment of compliance and auditing, and your new coworker, the Jamf AI Assistant, which has visibility into your unique Jamf environment to help you succeed with tasks day to day. As always, a webinar is just the start of the journey. We hope our topic today will help you adopt the new Jamf platform features, including declarative device management. We do have some additional resources to share with you. Jamf solutions help organizations of any size successfully manage their growing fleet of Apple devices. With device management, the foundational element to serving end users and securing your environment, including inventory management, more inventory than anyone with robust integrations via the Jamf Marketplace and Jamf API. For app installers, for simplified app lifecycle management and policies for advanced workflows, zero touch deployment, automated and seamless enrollment experience right out of the box, bring your own device, embracing user choice and just right management to empower users while protecting their privacy, and self-service plus, the ultimate end user experience, getting everything a user needs is just one click away. Of course, we are nothing without our customers and that is proven with the Jamf Nation community. This online forum is home to over 100,000 Apple IT focused individuals that learn from each other, discuss best practices, and have access to a wealth of resources and third-party tools. You can create a free account today to join in on the discussion. Also check out the Jamf Marketplace with tools and resources to help others, including documentation for our new platform API, which will help you build tools to automate blueprints and more. Now we just had our conference in Denver, Colorado this October for the largest gathering of Apple IT admins in the world. I hope you were able to attend, but if not, you can catch all the session recordings on our YouTube channel soon, and we'd love to see you next year in Kansas City. Thanks so much for listening today.